Um, for example, too, Andy, another example of uh, the translation differences, right before communion we say, Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. But the new translation will say, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Say but the word and my soul shall be healed. Well, they basically say the same thing, but what is so important about uh, about changing that word, those words to come under my roof? You know, I think part of it is is that it it, in, it implies a more personal aspect of what's going on. Again, this whole idea of you, right? Mm -hmm. it, it takes away from the sacrality of what's going on. It's an imprecise word again. You know, when it talks about coming under your roof, it makes that a very intimate, a very personal moment. You know, and you, and, and you as priest, you know, Christ as, as sacrament, you know, confected, you know, coming under my roof, becoming part of me, you know, we're getting ready to take Christ into ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and the traditional understanding is, is that Christ would remain with us for about 15 minutes after mm -hmm. we receive Holy Communion. Well, that, that particular prayer, the Domine non subdignus, ut in tres subtect the you know, in the Latin, tells us, literally tells us to prepare to receive the Lord. And we're going to receive Him into our temple. Right, our, if our body is our temple, and that's where we're at, then it has to come under our roof, because a temple, you know, is an open air. Yeah, that that's a, uh, a beautiful image. When you when you imagine that your that your soul is a temple, mm -hmm. that you're he's entering into the temple of your home, your life, your soul, your spirit. It's not just he comes to me. Right. There's a deeper meaning to it than just that term me, and also it it. Uh, it's reminiscent of the words the centurion used in the scripture, the story that Jesus uh, was approached by a Roman s soldier who said, my, my uh, servant is home ill, would you come and cure him? And Jesus said, uh, yes, I'll come. And then the centurion said, but can't you just say a word and not have to bother to come? And, and he said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Say but the word and my servant shall be healed. So the translation in Latin is accurately reflecting the Bible verse quoting the centurion who asked Jesus to come and heal his son. Right. And so the new translation, which is more accurate, will reflect more accurately the scriptural words of the centurion, right. which is also an important point to remember that we are, we are quoting the scripture here. There's so, so much uh, richness to the scripture whenever there are allusions to it that we should be specific about making sure it's clear that the illusions are faithful to the original. Another one uh, ex expression that will be changed is on the third Eucharistic prayer, it says, uh, from, the, from, uh, from the east to the west, a perfect offering has been made to the glory of your name. Well, now the new translation will say, from the rising to the setting of the sun, to the glory of your, to the glory of your name. I like that one, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like that one because the original says from the rising to the setting of the sun, which is a very poetic image. You know, you can get, this, you know, you can get the image of the sun rising, the sun setting. Well, the, the translation we've been using for the past 20, 30 years says the east to the west. It's not as beautiful, it's not as poetic, it's not as rich in imagery mm -hmm. as the rising and the setting of the sun. So the literal translation is the rising to the setting of the sun. And so again, isn't, that's an example of how moving to a more faithful translation of the Latin will give us a more beautiful, more image-packed uh, liturgical rite. Right. No, I agree. And I think, you know, you also can look at it from a, you know, from a, a theological aspect of it and, you know, the rising of the sun. Mm -hmm. You know, not just the sun as in the circular disk that you see in the, mm -hmm. in the sky, but also from the rising of the sun being Jesus Christ coming back from the east, mm -hmm. and then when he leaves and the world is redeemed, to the setting of the world. I mean, there, there are lots of different images that you can take into this, you know, and it becomes, again, it, it speaks to precision. You know, from east to west, the perfect offering may be made. Well, okay, f fine. How far east and how far west? Yeah. You know, I mean, does when that you mean talk... mean Newark and, and L.A.? Right, is exactly. That or does it mean London and Tokyo? I mean, yeah. how far are we supposed to go with that? You know, when it talks about from the rising of the sun to its setting, it's encompassing the entirety of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, from the beginning of the day, for all of the day, for all people gathered together, to the end of the day. 
to, you know, for all people gathered as well. Andy, you know, we're talking about the, these changes that are coming up uh, in, in the language used. That's going to involve, uh, of course, new altar missiles. Right. But what do you think is going to happen uh, to the, the music, and what do you think is, is going to happen to the missilettes and all of that? You know, personally, I'd like to see the missilettes burn. <laughs> but that's just my own personal opinion. Um, you know, realistically, what I think is going to happen, I think you're going to see a more accurate translation of music as well. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this concept that we have to be a for him church. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not necessarily the case. We have a rich tradition, you know, that has been brought forth in the ordinary form or in the new, in the Pauline Mass or the New Mass uh, by Salem in, in France that says that we can still use the introit or the entrance, the entrance verse, right? We don't have to use the, the responsorial psalm. There's also something called a gradual, and that can be used as well, which is another verse which is tied directly to the readings into the day, into the mass at hand. You know, what I think is you're going to see, you're going to see a move towards using those alternative, alternatives as well as using the traditional, well, using the new traditional mm -hmm. responsorial psalm and the new traditional entrance hymn. Do you think they're going to be able to take the new translation uh, of the Mass and, and, and ad adapt the music to those words? Sure, I you absolutely. think it's going to be, of course, some of the music I hope they can adapt it. Right. Uh, because right. some of the music I think is ab abysmal. But Right. If you look at, there's, <laughs> a, there's, a, there's a group out there now, and I'm actually a member of the Church Music Association of America. Mm -hmm. And what they've done is they've actually already translated all of this into English. And are they going to try to uh, use Gregorian melodies for some Absolutely, of Absolutely, yep. And it'll be with modern notation. Really? So mm -hmm. not only will you have the traditional Gregorian melody that goes in, but you will also have, have it set to modern notation. So the, for those, of the, those people who don't understand Gregorian notation or well, news, that's good. That's good. then they'll be able mm -hmm. to, to put it to modern notation and use the five staff as opposed to the four staff and everything else. You that. know, all these changes that we're talking about uh, uh, impact people's lives. Mm -hmm. It impacts the priest, it impacts bishops, pope, all the way down to the uh, person in the pew. Not that that's down, but it involves all of us. Priest, out people, to. so out to. So uh, it's going to be somewhat difficult, but mm -hmm. I want to urge everyone to be patient and to know that, uh, that this is going to give us a more faithful uh, celebration of the Mass, faithful to the original text, and, a, and, a, and I think a deeper and richer one. I think what won't happen this time is it won't just be thrust upon us like mm -hmm. it was in the 60s. Mm -hmm. I think at this point we're going to get catechesis. I think mm -hmm. that you know, pastors are much you know, more thoughtful and, and are, are taking this more seriously as far as they can from a teaching and a catechetical mm -hmm. point of view. And so they're going to see a more of a, of a teaching moment to yeah. be able to say to the I people think that's right. over the court, you know, and, and, and if, mm -hmm. if pastors were to include them in the homily, for say, you know, and say we're going to do a series on the, on the liturgy and we're going to teach why and with your spirit is more precise than, and also with you, and why it's for many as opposed to for So all. what you're saying then, Andy, is that prior to these changes, there will be a number of weeks that uh, they'll be explained. There'll be stuff in the, there'll be material in the bulletins, there'll be materials in the Dawson paper and so forth. That would be my hope as a, yeah, that, as a parishioner. That's my plan. I think that's the plan. Andy, once Sounds again, thank you. You've been most you. informative, most helpful. And I want to thank our listening audience and our viewers for being with us on The Heart's Treasure. See you next week, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.